Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's everyone doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Eight Queens Roundtable Leadership Symposium. I am your host, Jacqueline Kabat Harrison, and I am so excited that you have joined us for this symposium. For those of you that may not know, let me just give you a quick introduction. I am actually the host for Eight Queens Roundtable Leadership Symposium, as well as Eight Queens Roundtable Show, which is dedicated to providing personal, professional, and leadership development for African-American women in business to help you all scale your businesses, to help you reach those long-term goals that you are hoping that you are going to reach. I'm not going to say hoping that you are going to reach, to be able to increase your impact. This is where you're going to get all of those gems and those tips and those tools, all of the powerhouse women that have joined us on the platform. And I have one here with me today, Miss Nadia, and I'm going to let her, you know, release all of her jewels and gems in just a moment. Okay. But I'm just telling you, if you want to be ready, grab your pen and your pad. Okay. Your favorite drink. No judgment here. Your favorite drink and just sit back and relax and take it all in. So I want you to make sure that you check out all of the other interviews as well. Okay. Because again, these women, these girl bosses, these women, these powerhouses are really, have really scaled their business. And they have been able to do it in such a way that they make it look flawless. Okay. But they're going to be sharing different tips and tools with you. So again, make sure you stick around, catch all of the other videos. If you catch us in the middle, then go back and catch it from the beginning, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Miss Nadia Francois. <laughs> I tried, right. I don't know if I got it right, but. You did it, Queen, I, you did it. <laughs> Good, 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 good. All right. So go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about, you know, you, who you serve and how you serve them. Yes, ma'am. Well, first off, thank you so much for having me here on a Queen's Roundtable. I am super honored to be here and super mm -hmm. excited to share this time with you. My name is Nadia Francois. I am a serial entrepreneur. I am from the great state of Louisiana. And I am the mother of four boys, four men <laughs> now, but I have four sons that I raised as a single entrepreneur, y'all. So that right there is testament that this can be done. All right. But besides that, um, I'm like I said, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, I've been in the entrepreneurship role for over 20 years. And I know I look young, but I have been doing this a very long time. Like I said, down here in the South. So it's a little bit <laughs> challenging, but it is well worth it all. Um, I am the CEO of What's Your Superpower TV channel and the host of What's Your Superpower TV show. I am also an international best-selling author. Um, I think I'm at five or six right now. I'm not sure. Um, but yes, I'm an international best-selling author. I'm a visionary author. So I also uh, plan out book projects myself. I'm also a beautypreneur, y'all. This is my baby. This is what's, what raised me is what I like to say, the beauty industry. Um, I'm a hairstylist, been doing it since I was 15 years old, licensed for over 16 years. I'm also a barber. I'm also an educator in the field. I'm also a product line owner, and I have several ebooks and resources that help beauty industry professionals, along with a great uh, amount of resources for regular entrepreneurs, because 
growing up in in the industry period and growing up as an entrepreneur, there's a lot of things that, you know, I learned by bumping my head, by failing, getting back up, you know, and keeping pushing. But one true thing that I learned along the way was that I didn't want my sisters to have to go through all the things that I had to go through in order to make it. So I want to look I look forward to sharing tonight and I want to give as much as I can give to help you women, female entrepreneurs who are who are who I serve. And I help you in my biz, business strategy coaching to increase your overall productivity and increase your bottom line by what? Organizing, automating and reciprocating. So I'm excited. Thank you, Ms. Jacqueline. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm excited to have you here. I mean, some of this, I mean, I knew you you were a powerhouse, but some of this is a little new to me. So I'm, I'm learning a little bit as we go along as well. So I know you're a native, you said, of Louisiana. Yes. And you initially started out, you said, with a, with a clothing? Mm-mm. Well, kind of. I didn't say that, but <laughs> I started out doing hair in my mom's oh, kitchen. Hair. Okay. 15, okay. Yes. But by that really being, I feel like doing hair is my passion. That's my gift. That is my ministry. Um, and so a lot of times I negate to mention that, but my first actual business I sold nursing uniform scrubs out of the trunk of my car. <laughs> really? So that was my first official business that had like an EIN and all that good stuff. Um, and I was 19 years old. So that's what got me started. Okay. Okay. Hair. Okay. I don't know how I, I don't know how I heard clothing. So <laughs> you went from hair to what, what, what was the next, your, your next. Partnership. Um, Educator, okay. business strategist, okay. media okay. mogul. Well, Maven, I ain't going to say mogul. I got to get my money first before I'm a mogul. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice, 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 nice. All right. So since we're talking about leadership, okay, let me ask you this. When did you first consider yourself to be a leader or be able to um, except that title. Hmm. That's a good one. Um, I think that I first had to, I had to accept it because it has been on me from birth. I just feel like I was born a leader, but I, I really truly believe it took me until I was about 28, 29 years old to really accept the role. And I had children and everything, you know, um, but to knowing that is there and accepting it is two different things. And just realizing what God had placed in me, because that's what brought it out of me, right? When I began to give my business over to God, when I began to give my life over to God, when I began to give my kids over to God, he began to show me everything that he had put in me for me to be able to maneuver and live this life that I live. And so I think I was about 28, 29, which was about 13, 14 years ago. Okay. All right. And I ask that because a lot of times women don't necessarily see themselves as a leader. Other people do, right? right? Whether it be in the church, maybe within their family. Um, at their, you know, at their jobs, right? But that sometimes they don't necessarily, if you say, are you a leader? Right. They're like, no, I'm not a leader. You know what I mean? So it's sometimes it, it, it takes us a minute to really let that sink in. Yeah. You know, so that's also another reason why I want to talk about this topic is because ladies, 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 accept that title. Accept it and walk in your purpose. Yes, absolutely. All of that cowering or um, hiding, hiding away, you know, back in the shadows or behind the scenes, you know, it's, it's time to pat yourself on the back, right? And really recognize 
who you are. Absolutely. Recognize who you are and acknowledge that gift. Yes. Okay. So now my next question I'm going to ask you in reference to leadership. What would you say have been some of your, well, you know what? I'm going to ask about challenges. But before I get into that, let me ask, what would you say are some characteristics of a good leader? So I believe that character, some characteristics of a good leader definitely include integrity. It includes confidence. It includes passion. It also includes courage, the ability to take those risks, because a lot of times, as you previously stated, we are afraid to walk into leadership because of all that comes with it. You know, it's not so much all the time that we don't know that it's there. We don't want to acknowledge it. We don't want to accept the call. Right. And so um, just being a risk taker, having that courage to take it all in. Also, being able to bounce back resiliency. And so I don't know how many you want me to say. How many you want some more? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of them. <laughs> I know you want to go a little further. <laughs> what characteristics do you think you, you bring to leadership? Or what characteristics do you think make you a good leader? Um, I think the... Me being a forward thinker okay. make me a good makes me a good leader. Also, the integrity part um, and the risk taking. You know, mm -hmm. I will definitely try anything at least once <laughs> in okay. business. And you know, I believe in taking care of my clients. I believe in telling the truth. I believe in you know, just owning what I am and walking in my purpose. And if there's something that I can't do, I'm going to be honest all the way 100, right? Not about to be trying to do something that's not in my lane. If I have someone else that can help, I will refer them, things like that. You know, I just really um, embrace making other people feel good about themselves. That is one of my strongest characteristics. Um, being able to pull the veil, if you, if you will, away mm -hmm. from their faces, help other people to build their confidence. I'm really good at that. I'm a really good motivator. Okay. And you know what? I think a lot of times people miss that part of leadership mm -hmm. is being able to motivate individuals or being able to um, understand the individuals that you're, that you're yes. leading, right? Because yes. everybody is different. Everybody learns differently. Everyone is uh, motivated by different forces. Yes. You know, and I think a part of being a good leader is being able to, being able to recognize that. Mm -hmm. as well as what, what you mentioned in terms of taking risks. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times if you're, if you're not willing to do something different, you're not going to get anything different. Yeah. You know, if you keep doing the same thing, right? Yes. So how, how will you be able to scale? How will you be able to build? How will yes. you be able to create an empire? Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're going to keep doing or playing it safe, so to speak. Right. Exactly. A lot of us do. We do. A lot of us do, right? But that's the lack of confidence. I feel that's the lack of confidence. That's also a lack of faith. You know, mm -hmm. um, God put, like I said earlier, everything that we need is already in us. Everything that we need is already in us. We just have to awaken it and then embrace it and then shoot for the stars, right? Yep. I agree. I like that. I mean, well, of course I like that, right? <laughs> That's the title. Because I believe, like you said, it's in there. Yeah. Like, we spend so much time looking on the outside of ourselves. Yes. Right? When really we have it within us and it just may need to be cultivated. You Absolutely. know, it's there. Yes. You know, because if you really think about, because I, I actually, I'm a, I'm a therapist, a therapist by day. 
Okay. And oftentimes people get so bogged down with what they don't have, mm. you know, and or, or what they need to improve. I say that what they need yeah. to improve. But if you really look at it from a strengths perspective, you're really building upon what you like, maybe your resourcefulness. Yeah. Like I know, you know, growing up as a 70s child, you know, we initially we didn't we didn't really have a lot of money and our parents were very resourceful. Mm -hmm. You know, me, I was very, I'm very resourceful, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it, it's about building. It's about, like you said, bringing out and building on those, on those skills. Yes. Adaptability, right. Um, yes. Resourcefulness, um, uh, ability to take risks. Yes. But like you said, it's all under that umbrella of, of having a good, healthy confidence and self-confidence. Absolutely. So I totally agree with you on that. I also believe a good leader is also a good follower. Mm, okay. So elaborate on that a little bit more because some people might be like, wait a minute, say that again. Yes. In order to lead, you must be able to be a follower and a servant, right? Because leading is not about bossing people around or telling people what to do. Leading is more of an attitude, right? It's not so much of an action. It's more of an attitude. It's more of a disposition. And so if you project a cattiness or, you know, being too proud as a leader, then you will not be received well. But if you are shown as someone that as just as someone can follow you, that you can follow someone else and, you know, take um, even criticism, uh, take directions from other people mm -hmm. being able to lead is something you are transforming so you can transform to whatever role needs to be accomplished right and without without an attitude or without feeling out of place because when you are a leader, you are you should be adaptable. Like you said, you can adapt to whatever role you have to play at whatever position you're at. So, you know, like I said, I truly believe that being a leader is more than just about a title. It's more than just about, you know, bossing people around. It is literally a disposition. It is your attitude. It is being able to follow. It is being able to listen. It is being able to be patient, you know, and listen to what is needed and then respond correctly. I like that because I thought about just thinking about all the bosses I've had in the past. And I have to say a very small percentage of them were good leaders, mm -hmm. you know, because oftentimes I think that's overlooked. The whole yes. ability to, what did you say? The ability to be able to follow. Yeah. You know, because you can, you, it, it's still, a, it's still a learning process. Absolutely. You never can know everything. You can never, ever, I don't care if you live to be 200, you can never know everything. So it doesn't matter if this person is 20 years old, teaching you something, 40 mm -hmm. years old, teaching you something, 60 years old, teaching you something. You have to be a willing vessel. That's true. I, I agree. I agree 100%. So let's segue into what would you say have been some of your challenges? And um, or what, what are some of the challenges that maybe, well, let's do both. Some challenges that you have faced personally in leadership as an African-American woman, woman, or some of the challenges you think just overall that we face in leadership? All right. So for me, I think one challenge that I've had to overcome mm -hmm. as a Black woman in leadership are the men. <laughs> Just the way you said it. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not trying to, you know, bash the men or anything, but 
literally in leadership, men are Rottweilers, right? Rottweilers and pit bulls, okay? And we in there like a little poodle, right? No. I learned that I had to be a Rottweiler and a pit bull as well. So that goes also with conforming to your environment. You know, when you know, because as I've stated earlier, I'm a serial entrepreneur. So I've had businesses in several different industries. I've also ran other people's businesses in several different industries, like the trucking industry, the education industry, um, the transportation industry. So these industries or male, most industries other than the beauty industry is male dominated, right? And even in the beauty industry, when it comes to the men and the barbers and, you know, all of that, it's still a lot of, you know, well, you're just a woman, you don't know what we're talking about, or, you know, just, I really think that men in leadership roles look at the women around them or that measure up around the same area that they measure up. I think they be looking at us like we're their mom or their wife or, (laughs) and it just comes off very degrading. You know, it, 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 I feel like we should be respected as first off professionals and then as individuals, it, it shouldn't be a gender base or, you know, a color base because then I'm a double negative, right? And then being a young woman going through a lot of this stuff, you know, where they feel that they can intimidate you with their words or their actions. And like I said, you just have to go right back at them with the same Thing that they're bringing, maybe not being, you know, not being rude or anything like that, but with that same confidence, that same assertiveness, all of that that they bring to the table, we have to kind of, I'm not going to be manly for anyone, but I am going to stand my ground. So that w- that has been a challenge for years, um, you know, an ongoing challenge, I'll put it like that. That's been an ongoing challenge as a woman in business to really be taken seriously by the male counterparts. And also raising children, raising children as an entrepreneur is a struggle. It really is. But it's also a struggle with the job. And looking at it from from that perspective um, of being a black woman in business, a leader, that is a vulnerable space, Mm -hmm. right? And so saying that because as a beauty entrepreneur, I had to bring my kids to work sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. And most men don't have to do that. Most men don't have to do that. So it's all on the woman. It's all on the woman. And so that, that those are just two channels. Of course, I can probably go on and on if I keep on thinking about it. But those, I think, are something that probably every woman encounters when she's a leader um, in a male-dominated field or industry. And, you know, just feeling inferior, Yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of sitting here thinking about that, and I could definitely, for some reason or another, the first thing that came to my mind is, I'm thinking about coaching, mm-hmm. you know, let's say a business strategist, or, you know, just a, or a motivational, motivational coach, mindset coach, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. And I feel that you can find a number, you can have a male coach Mm -hmm. and he will have both men and women, you know, in his community. However, I feel that when you have a woman coach, Mm -hmm. you have other women in the community. So, and and I know that that this isn't what you were saying in particular, but this is what, this is kind of where 
it brought you. Right, where it brought me. It's that I've looked at that and I, I just find that interesting. But to me, it kind of goes into, and I know some men will listen to this, they'll be like, oh no, that's not the case. That's not the case. It's like, okay, just, just, you know what, just, just have a seat, okay? Just have yeah. a seat for a minute. Yes. Um, because, you know, I, I think that, again, that just kind of goes back to the whole piece about being taken seriously. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I think women c- can follow follow a man, you know, or, or mm-hmm. sign up with coaching services, a coaching program from, I don't know, let's say Eric Thomas. I guess mm-hmm. he's just kind of on my mind right now because I've been listening. Do you know who Eric Thomas is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I've been listening to a lot of his motivational speeches in the morning, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that, that, that's a whole other thing, y'all, but I'm, I'm, I'm on this kick now. And I really find that it really sets the tone of my day. But anyway, mm-hmm. let me wheel it on back in. So I can listen to him and get something out of his message. And even like, and, and I don't even, I don't have to even talk myself into it. You know what I mean? I just automatically assume that, that I'm going to be able to get something from it. Whereas I just don't think that it works the other way when it comes to men. I don't, you, you know what I mean? I think a woman has to have, has to be maybe endorsed <laughs> by right. another man. Right. Or maybe they, they were forced or just, you know, heard something and like, oh, okay, well, she makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know? But I, but I think it's kind of ingrained in them that, um, and, 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 it, and I don't even think it's a conscious decision. Just right. that, oh, you know, she don't really have that much to say. So I definitely agree with you, which is, again, why I think it's so important that we're actually talking about this, is that oftentimes we as women, we have like that, that double double negative to prove. You know what I mean? We're, we're yeah. a color and we're a woman. Yeah. You know, so oftentimes that, that's a whole nother, you know, uh, it, it brings about a whole nother dimension of proving ourselves. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like we constantly have to even prove that we deserve a seat at the table. Absolutely. You know? And that that's why I say Queen's Round Table. Yes. So, you know, because it, it's a situation that, you know, you get tired of having to um, convince other folks that you deserve a seat at the table or convince other folks that you actually know what you're talking about. Right. You know, and I just think that that's just a whole nother dynamic that you know, our male counterparts don't, don't go through and don't really, probably don't really care. (laughs) (laughs) They don't have to, you know what I mean? Exactly. You know, so yeah, so that, that, that's kind of where it uh, took me because I had a conversation with my husband and we were talking about Lisa Nichols. You know, Lisa Nichols? Mm -hmm. Quick sip. And he was just like, oh, I don't know who that is, you know, and not just that example. I mean, there's other, you know, examples, but and I was just like, really, <laughs> you know, and so it just kind of just really, it just kind of really got, got me to thinking, you know, yeah. no, I mean, my target audience is women and, right. and, and I target women because I'm, I'm actually initially first and foremost, a confidence and success coach. So when you talk about confidence and self-confidence, I can, I believe that individuals who share similar, similar experiences can be able to relate to some of the different things that I talk about. Right. When you talk about confidence and self-confidence, you know? Um, so I'm saying all that to say, I've never marketed to men. You know, when you're talking about confidence, I'm not saying that I can't teach a man how to be more confident, but my services are more catered towards women. Right. Right. And I kind of have a dual, you know, depending on which business, you know? And so that's why it's like, ugh, y'all men gonna make me. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, But yeah, you know, because even like you said, um, with, males picking a female coach i get the same thing with female barber they're like you know what you're doing and i'm like what are you serious (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm probably better than your male barber while you playing. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. <clears throat> because, you know, me as a woman, and, you know, and some women, I, I don't know how other women feel, but, you know, I wear a short, a short haircut. And I would, I would prefer a woman. I mean, this never even really crossed my mind that, you know, oh, maybe I should go to this man because he's going to, he's going to be able to do it better. You know, and I don't know, maybe the other women out there think like that. I mean, I don't know, but I definitely know that I can see a man questioning, you know, like, like they, they have to have some encouraging. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, she's real good. Right. You know, or they have to have seen her a few times. Right. You know, producing some good cuts. Yeah. You know, that, that kind of thing. But again, you know, it's still kind of like, you know, proving yourself. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely think that those are some of the challenges that um, that um, we go through in in, in, in leadership. And, it, and also, too, with raising of the children and the constant, you know, it, it's just some it's something else on your plate. It's just yeah. another dynamic that our male counterparts don't have to deal with. Right. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. In reference to, in reference to other women, oh, you know what? Other women in leadership, because I want to end on a note where I want you to definitely leave the ladies with some tips. Okay. You know, just some uh, small, actionable tips. At, at least maybe one or one or two. But before we get into that, what do you have any anything to add in reference to other dealing with other women in leadership? <laughs> How long we got? Oh. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. And I wasn't gonna even ask that one, but again, I'm just I'm just flowing with this, you know. Yeah, well, you know, while we were speaking, I thought about that crossed my mind, you know, like is it the same for women? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know what? I think that sometimes if a woman feels that another if and it can it can truly be that they don't know this woman or you know but i feel like when women leaders or women in leadership positions have to encounter each other sometimes there's a little block there and like i said i don't know if it's because you know of the unknown or is it intimidation Mm -hmm. um is it imposter syndrome i'm not really sure um but there are some issues uh with women leaders and but my thoughts on that is there is enough for us all so there's no reason for us to ever feel intimidated about each other um, we should always, always, always try to help each other in whatever capacity it can be, you know, because that goes back into the characteristics of a true leader, being able to follow. Yes, me and you are both leading women on a platform, but when it's your turn to speak, I'm going to close my mouth. When it's my turn to speak, you gonna close your mouth, right? And if we are, if either of us are struggling in an area, mm -hmm. you gonna help me pull it out and I'm gonna help you pull it out, you know? Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, it's not always like that. Every situation isn't like that. There are some beautiful, beautiful female collaborations going on these days mm -hmm. and I love it. And so on the flip side, we as women also support each other in these in these positions we also because we know what we go through right mm -hmm. and so being able to support each other in these situations on these platforms um you know coming together when we have to fight in a male dominated situation is also a look for women in leadership so it's not definitely not all bad there are some things that you know, can be done better. But I feel like as Black women in business, we have to stick together. 
we have to. And we definitely have to understand that we are not each other's competition. We aren't. Have you made your million yet? I'm asking. <laughs> have you made your million yet? No. I think I've made my million, but I spent it on all those kids. So I'm trying to recoup my million. You know, so that we how can we be in competition if neither one of us are there? We have not arrived yet. <laughs> I mean, we've arrived because God is has his glory and his grace upon us, but literally we have not made it to where we are working to get yet. And so therefore we should not be fighting against each other. We should definitely be gleaning on each other and learning from each other and boosting each other's confidence boosting each other's business. If it's something I can't do, my sis over here, she got you. You know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I was, how old are your children? They are 20, 19, and 15. Oh, 20, 19, and 15. Yes. Okay. All right. So you you really don't, you don't really have no babies. I don't. I don't. Thank you, Jesus. I am beyond but that point. Yeah, I started, <laughs> right, yeah, you are. I um I started late, so my son is uh uh eleven. So yeah. But you don't have hard to go. Right, yeah, but we, we made it past that phase. He used to want to be in every video that I that I did. Yeah, you probably can't even get him to send he you a care less. <laughs> if I wanted him to even pop his head in, he wouldn't do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah. But, um, you know, and th this is another, this is an impromptu question, y'all. Um, what were your examples of other women in leadership growing up? And, and do, you, do you have a, a mentor, I guess maybe a business uh, mentor of some kind? So growing up, I don't really recall many women in leadership just to, okay. I mean you know I'm from the south you know um and then my family is from Mississippi so further south <laughs> and it's like I I mean of course my grandmother my mother those type of people but they weren't on well my grandmother was for a while an entrepreneur but they weren't entrepreneurs they were good people to look up to for you know morals values mm -hmm. raising children things like that but as an entrepreneur there were not many women i had to look up to to be honest with you and that could just be from you know me not being you know we didn't have internet um too long while i was coming up um so it could be from a lack of resources and knowing things, but there were some women in the city here, Baton Rouge, that took off, you know, in the beauty industry, being that that's the industry that raised me. But a lot of things weren't handled properly. You know, of course, back then, I probably didn't know that, but growing up, learning processes and procedures, learning what and what not to do, learning customer service, learning mm -hmm. all of the things that make a business viable. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like those people didn't teach me any of that. You know, I literally had what brought me around was I literally had to go back to college. Oh, OK. Yeah. I literally had to go back to college. I went back because, as I stated, I started being an entrepreneur at 19 years old. I didn't have any type of training, no schooling. I'm just out there hustling, you know. And But once I realized that because I, I married early, had those children, then we divorced. And when, when I realized that it was all on me because when we divorced, he divorced the children as well. And so it was just all on me. 
And when I realized that, I was like, you have to get it together because you can't afford to fail, mm -hmm. right? And so I am a information aholic, right? I like to know what's going on. I like to know what I'm doing. And there was no one around me that I felt could give me that without having to go to school. So I went back and got my bachelor's in business administration, concentration in management. And I was at that time, I was working for someone. Um, and that's what really motivated me to go was because it's like, like you stated earlier, people see the stuff in you. Sometimes you don't even see it. And I felt that this business owner took a chance on me, allowing me to be, you know, like a director in her company. So I needed to fill that position properly. Right. And so I went back to school to be able to do that. And like I stated, because at, at that point I couldn't afford to fail. I had too many mouths to feed. And so through that, I didn't have any mentors. I did not. But once I went to school, changed the environment because, you know, I don't know if you know much about the beauty industry, but it's not a lot of education that goes on within our industry past school, you know, past licensure. And so someone like me that is a forward thinker and always looking to do something different or, you know, just to evolve in a different mm -hmm. area, I was I was stuck. And I'm like, what do I do? Who do I turn to? You know, what do I do? And so that's why I went my little self back to school. And like I said, I had a job at that time, um, worked the job, went to school, graduated. I graduated in 2012 with four little bitty kids. And, you know, they are sleeping. When I put them to sleep, I have to stay up and do my work just sacrificing, you know, but then, like I said, as it got, as I got older and deeper into m making entrepreneurship, my number one priority and my number one income, I had to get some mentors. I had to, because at that point, you know, of course, school is good. School gives you your backup and all the information you need, but it doesn't give you the experience. And so without that experience, you need the mentors. Right. So they can guide you and help you, give you good information. And so I met my mentors literally by them reaching out to me for something, mm -hmm. right? So they may have reached out to me to do their hair, do their makeup or something like that. And then when I find out what they are into, I open my mouth because a closed mouth don't get me. Right? Yep. And so I'm like, oh, you do this. I need help with that. Can you help me? You know, and boom. OK. Yes. Wow. So mentorship is definitely needed, needed, needed. And, you know, that topic always comes up about uh, mentorship, you know, and about how sometimes people, you know, they don't, they want to, they don't, they feel some kind of way, yeah. I guess, about asking someone to mentor them. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to kind of, because we're, we're going to, we're going to close it up shortly. But I wanted to say, I think, you know, African-American women, we tend to be the most educated, I mean, PhDs, mass, you know, multiple master's degrees. Yeah. And I think when we go from that corporate America into our own business, I think that adds an extra component to where people don't want to say they need help. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I got this, I got that. I was the boss working, you know, for a Fortune 500 company, but that's different when you become the employer. It's a different mindset. Absolutely. And you do need mentoring if you really want to, you know, if you really want to uh, scale appropriately, I guess. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And build that that appropriate foundation. Yeah. But I, I, I think that's a component and why sometimes people don't want to ask for help. 
Yeah. Um, and then pride. Pride, yeah. man. Yeah. Pride kills so many dreams. <laughs> it does. And we don't realize it until we see our great idea mm-hmm. scrolling across somebody else's page. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to drop that pride, you know, yeah. I'm still learning that. I mean, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not super prideful because like I said, when you are raising four kids by yourself, you got to get humble, baby, because you're not going to get nowhere if you don't. And, but, you know, being able to ask for help. Being able to just, even if you can't ask for it, just accept the fact that you need help. Right. Because now with the emergence of technology, is not hard anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's what our people, our women, our more seasoned entrepreneurs, people that have worked for several years and then had to pivot into entrepreneurship or made the choice to pivot into mm-hmm. entrepreneurship, You need someone to guide you, but you have so many resources to help you. Not all of them are easy to, you know, figure out and get going. So those are the ones that you need to solicit help for. But the stuff that you can Google, the stuff that you can go on YouTube and learn about, do it, do it. And then because what that does is opens it up to you and then you can decide, can I do this on my own or do I need someone to guide me through this? Right. Mm-hmm. And so that that's what mentorship and that's what technology has brought. When I tell you, I, I'm not even going to say I wish because I'm good with what I've been through. But if... <laughs> We had the access and the resources that are available right now in this time. Back when I started, I would be a a definite force to reckon with. I would be a super powerhouse. (laughs) I know that's right. Yes. I know that's right. So, Nadia, let's go ahead and close it out. Let them know what upcoming projects you have. As well as where they, as well as where they can find you. Yes, ma'am. So of course, I always have something coming up. Um, of course, I am the host of Power Conversations podcast and the editor in chief of Power Conversations magazine. So those are two visibility platforms that I utilize to put your business out there. And that means you can gain features. You can, my pot to be a guest on the podcast is absolutely free. So you just have to sign up to be a guest, schedule, and we book you. And then we have our uh, magazine, of course, to access it is free. Um, It is a digital and print uh, publication. So with, you can order prints or you can read it digitally. Also, feature your business, right? We want you to be seen. Our platform has millions globally watching, looking, learning, ready to network. And so with that being said, I have two amazing book anthologies coming up this year. One of them is called A Mother's Prayer, Love Letters to My Daughter. And this book is something for you to create a legacy with, something for you to leave behind for your daughter to always be able to go and look up and say, mom left this for me, mom wrote this to me, what an amazing legacy to leave. Very affordable. We will do a bestseller campaign. You are um, marketed dr- through this process. There's a marketing platform and strategy, all of that good stuff. The other book project, same uh, valuable resources that come along with it. 
but it is called Boss Moms Who Cook. So it'll, it is a cookbook anthology where you can put in your favorite recipe that helps you get through your busy life and that your family loves. We are accepting salad recipes, appetizer recipes, entree recipes, desserts, and drinks. So that's another wonderful project that we have coming up that is set to launch um, at the end of the year. So we are just accepting all of our prospects right now. Also, What's Your Superpower TV is always accepting guests to be interviewed, tell your story of overcoming adversity and pushing through using your God-given superpower. So all of that is available right on my website, www.nadiafrancois.com. I'm also a business strategist. So if you need help building your business to an, another level, a new level, reach out to me. We can get you going. Wow. Awesome. You are doing so much. I didn't even, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So thank you again so much for being on the Eight Queens Roundtable Leadership Symposium. Miss Nadia, you have been so, just so helpful. And I think the, the ladies are going to get a lot out of the different um, nuggets that you've dropped, as well as be able to follow her, you know, yeah. and stay up to date with everything that she has coming out you know, talk with her further about getting on our platforms to be more visible because we don't, we want to stop being the best kept secret, right? Yes. People can't buy from you if they don't know who you are. Absolutely. So again, I'm Jacqueline Kabah Harrison and you have joined us for A Queen's Roundtable Leadership Symposium and stay tuned and please check out all of the interviews from all of the other phenomenal girl bosses they're going to be telling you about different upcoming projects that they have, as well as how to level up your girl boss business, right? Whatever it may be, whether you're a publisher, whether you want to self-publish, whether you do summits, um, you're a coach, whatever it is, right? You need these practical tips and tools to be able to scale your business. So make sure you stick around, check out the other interviews, and also follow me at Realizing Your Potential. The number is 123. That's on Facebook, as well as I am on LinkedIn under Jacqueline Kaba Harrison. Okay. And my website is Realizing Your Potential. The number is 123.com. All right. So stay tuned for another awesome interview from another girl boss. All right. So take care. And I will talk to everyone again soon. Take care, ladies.